This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. When I go in to fill out a bet slip for Major League Baseball, I don't go in seeking out underdogs because in order to say I only want to bet underdogs, you kind of have to be saying the market inherently is undervaluing the underdogs on the money line in MLB games. And to make that assertion, essentially say it's essentially saying there's a big error in the market. And with a market as liquid, uh, with as much action on it as MLB money lines, I never want to make that assumption because I'm more likely to be wrong than the market is to be wrong. It just so happens that for today, I wound up finding four money lines on underdogs that I liked. And does that make me feel super comfortable? No. Does it mean my odds of having a disastrous night where I go 0 for 4 are pretty high? Yeah, I think that's definitely in play. But Again, our mindset with betting is to try to find spots where we think the implied odds are lower than what the actual odds are. And for me, that happens to be on four underdogs for tonight. So we're going to break down what those four underdogs are. We'll go through one strikeout prop as well, and then talk through how to view a different strikeout prop in the market as well. All right here for today over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Wednesday night's 13-game slate across Major League Baseball, outlining my favorite bets relative to the markets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We're going to dive into this slate here in just one second, outline where I'm seeing value for tonight. But uh, first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We had Brandon Gadula on yesterday talking some golf. We are breaking down the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Talk to Brandon about his favorite outrights, non-outrights for this week over at FanDuel. Check that out in the Covering the Spread podcast feed or the FanDuel YouTube page or on the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire TVs, Apple TV, or Roku as well if you want to get up and Adams, run it back, covering the spread and the solo shot all in one place. Make sure you download the FanDuel TV Plus app. Baseball season is in full swing, and there is no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dive in now to the MLB slate for tonight and begin with what I think is the best game on the slate. That is between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the San Diego Padres. The reason I love this game is because it's got Blake Snell taking on Mitch Keller. And how can you hate on that? It's going to be an electric matchup between two very good pitchers. And I do show value in the Pirates money line, which is currently plus 136 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. My model is high on Blake Snell, which is why I have more confidence in taking the Pirates here because the Snell sentiment from the model is input into my Moneyline model, and it's a very high sentiment. So when you take that, plug it in, and it still shows value on the opposing side, that to me says the Pirates here are a bit undervalued. I've got their win odds at 46.7%. The implied win odds at plus 136 are 42.4%. Keller... Definitely has taken a slight step back from where he was earlier on this year. But the underlying numbers are still really solid. 
if you look at his past eight starts, where he's been throwing his slider uh, more often once again, his skill interactive ERA is 3.28. He's facing the Padres here. Their WRC plus falls to 98 against righties based on the current active roster. So it may seem like a nightmare matchup, and it's not fun to face all the guys the Padres have, but it may not be as bad as it seems. I expect this game to be low scoring and close. And that pushes me to take the plus money on the dog. I also do have interest in some props in this game. So we'll circle back to it later on. But to me, I think taking the value in the Pirates here makes sense. Again, my model loves Blake Snell. And it still says the Pirates here are undervalued. So to me, that says we should take the Pirates here and feel good about it. I think that that's the way to play things based on my knowledge of the model. And based on what it's saying, I do think the Pirates of plus 136 are the proper play here. The second money line is one that is a bit longer um, and a bit scarier, but it is one where actually we've seen some movement uh, in our favor here. So it's actually shortened a bit, which is annoying, uh, not quite as big as it was before, but that's a Tigers money line. It was plus 198 earlier on this morning. It is now plus 188. The implied odds of plus 188 are 34.7%. My model puts the Tigers win odds at 40.9%. So still quite a big cushion between where my model is and the market is. And I think that's surprising because my model is generally quite high on the Rangers. And it's saying to bet the Tigers, who the model does not like, against them. It really does come down to the number, though. And also, my model's not as high on Dane Dunning. He's been trying to throw more sliders his past five starts. And in that time, 12.2% strikeout rate and a 5.53 skill interactive ERA. So hasn't been the best stretch for Dunning, even when he's been trying to, I think, gun for more strikeouts. So it's very possible the model is too high in Detroit here because they're not a great team, but they have shown some fight the past two nights. Obviously, last night, not as much, but uh, did get the win in game one of this series. So we've got a lot of wiggle room here to be too high on the Tigers, but for the market to also still be too low, even if we do have some error in our, on our side here. So it has shifted to plus 188, obviously not as favorable of a, of a bet as it was before when it was plus 198, but I do still have a decent gap between where I'm at in the market of about uh, six percentage points between me and the market. So that's enough for me to take the Tigers here and ride at them with the money line at plus 188. The final two money lines are in West Coast games. Let's start things off here with one uh, betting against the Rays. What could possibly go wrong with that? That is the Diamondbacks money line at plus 124. Now, you can get this at plus 130 at some other spots. So, as always, make sure you're shopping around. Make sure you find the best spot to get this market. And honestly, I'm a bit surprised to see Arizona still rated so low by the market, given how well they played this year. As you can see on the screen, they're 48 and 32 so far this year. They played really well. The Rays have two. So this is not like a, an anti-Rays thing. I think it's more of a pro-Arizona thing when I'm looking at the way things break down for them. I'm guessing the reason the market is so low on the Diamondbacks here is that Zach Davies is starting, and Davies has had hideous results recently, and the underlying numbers are bad too. But my model knows the underlying numbers are bad, and it still shows confidence in betting Arizona here. If I had to guess the reason why I have a gap between myself and the market in this one, it's probably because... I do put a decent amount of value in uh, relief pitching and defense. Both of those are going to favor Arizona in this game over the Rays. And while the Rays offense is better than Arizona's, Arizona's offense is definitely no slouch. I think the key here, not the key, you don't want to overrate one thing, but one thing that does help me a bit here is that the defense, talking about Arizona, the one thing they do specifically very well is limit opposing running games. They don't let you you know, run with reckless abandon on them. And I think that's encouraging against a Rays team that is very aggressive on the base pass. I'm not saying they will totally mitigate that aspect of what makes the race great, but they may be better equipped to handle it than a lot of teams would. So they've got a good defense, specifically one that can limit uh, opposing running games. They've got a good bullpen behind Zach Davies. Should he falter? Offense is good. I feel like we're a bit too high or a bit too low on Arizona here. My model has the Diamondbacks win odds at 48.3%. The implied odds at plus 124 are 44.6%. So again, as I mentioned, make sure you shop around. Try to check out what the best number you can get is because you can get plus 130 out there still. But I think even at plus 124, Arizona's value based on just how good they've been. I think that they're not quite getting the respect they deserve just yet. 
Final money line I wanted to discuss here for tonight is the Oakland A's against the Yankees. I know, doesn't sound fun, but it does sound more fun without Aaron Judge. The A's money line is plus 136 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, whereas I've got the A's a bit above that. I've got them at 48.1% actually, so pretty heavily above that. Um, And that is even with the Yankees offense being a much better offense against lefties than they are against righties when there's no Aaron Judge. If you look at them, Without Aaron Judge on the active roster, look at them facing lefties. Their WRC plus goes up to 108. It's 83 against righties. So they actually do benefit in a pretty big way by facing JP Sears as opposed to facing a righty. But Sears has been pretty good recently. He does let up a lot of fly balls, but temperature in Oakland tonight, 63 degrees. It is also generally a pitcher's park. So coldest temperature on the slate. It is uh, a pitcher's park in general, which means those fly balls won't do as much damage to J.P. Sears as they may do in some other situations. So it's actually a pretty good setup for Sears specifically. And beyond the fly balls, he's been really good recently. Leaning more on his forcing fastballs his past eight starts. And then that time, 4.35 skill interactive ERA, minimal walks, and a decent number of strikeouts. Domingo Herman, starting for the Yankees, has been, I think, searching. It seems like hasn't quite found what he's looking for. Looking at his past uh, six starts, the more sinkers, his skill interactive ERA is 4.87. A lot of hard contact in that time. So, yeah, the A's stink. They're not great by any means. Um, You know, it's not fun to be betting on them. But I do think that, again, the market is undervaluing them here. So the, the A's plus 136, I believe Fanduel is the best spot to find that number. So I would take the, the, the A's there, plus 136 in the money line. So again, to recap, the four money lines I like for tonight, the A's at plus 136, Arizona plus 124 at Fanduel. But again, shop around as always. The Diamondbacks money line at plus 120, or the, the Tigers money line at plus 188, and the Pirates money line at plus 136. I do want to go back to that Pirates game because there is a strikeout prop I like in that game now and a strikeout prop I will probably like in that game later on today. So let's go to the pitching tab here over at FanDuel and check things out. The one we're going to take right now is Mitch Keller, over five and a half strikeouts. That's at minus 122 right now. And to me, a very advantageous number. It's again, scary to go at the Padres here, but they're actually not a low strikeout team against righties. 23.3% strikeout rate on the current active roster against righties. And Keller, although the results have not always been perfect, has still been getting strikeouts in that aforementioned sample where he's been throwing more sliders. His strikeout rate there, 27.8%. The one downside is the Padres do tend to have pretty long plate appearances. They've taken on the uh, the Juan Soto mindset of let's draw this thing out, make it throw a lot of pitches. They average 4.01 pitches per plate appearance against righties, which is a big number. So that's a downside. Even with that, though, I have Keller projected for 7.3 strikeouts here. So laying minus 122 on over five and a half, totally fine by me. So I'll take Keller over five and a half at minus 122 right now. If you look at Blake Snell in this game, his strikeout prop is seven and a half with even money on the over. And that's a big number. And I actually have interest in that. However, I don't think the market does, because if you look elsewhere and look at what other books have as far as strikeout props for Blake Snell, most of them are still at six and a half, heavily juiced towards the over. So you could say, okay, is it better to bet Snell even money over seven and a half or take him at minus 156 or whatever it is over six and a half? And I want to give like a quick tool for easily identifying this. If you go to FanDuel, you can go down to the alt markets and you can see the alternate strikeouts and you can kind of see... If FanDuel had Snell at six and a half strikeouts, where would the over be at that one? So you scroll down to seven plus strikeouts. You see it Snell is minus 200. What that says is that FanDuel is well above the market on Snell's over six and a half strikeouts. They'd have him at minus 200, whereas other books have him at around minus 156 or so. Now, maybe we see other books climbed where FanDuel is, and maybe FanDuel winds up being just ahead of the market, and you would still want to take Snell even money. That's not true. I don't think that's the case because uh, Snell's strikeout over seven and a half was minus 102. It is now even money, which means there has likely been some money coming in on the under. So it has moved the other direction. Also, we've seen we have uh, the Snell to get eight plus strikeouts of plus 102. So um, again, I think that we're going to see some some stabilization between what FanDuel has and what the market has. What that says to me is if you want Snell over seven and a half strikeouts, Bet it later today. I don't think you'll get a worse number than even money over seven and a half. 
So what I would say is kind of have this tab open on your computer, hit refresh every now and then, see where Snell's at. And if you start to see a move back to minus 102 or so over seven and a half, maybe you take it at that point. I don't think that will happen, though, just based on the way I'm reading this market. I think there's a better chance that FanDuel bumps down to six and a half strikeouts for Snell than uh, we get minus money over seven and a half once again later on today. And again, let's say FanDuel does go down to six and a half strikeouts. Then you can just go back to that alt market and still get plus money over seven and a half strikeouts by getting eight plus strikeouts later on today. So I think it's always important to, like I, we always preach shopping for the best line. That is very important. You never want to pay $7 for a t-shirt when you could have paid $5 down the road. Like you want to make sure you always get the best price. I understand that some people may not have access to all these books. Maybe you have money in just one book. But you can still use the information from other sports books to make better decisions as betters. And to me, reading the other markets says, I don't want to bet Blake Snell over seven and a half right now, despite the fact that I have some interest in that market. It says to me, if I like this one and want to bet it later, I should wait and take it later on. Maybe that means I miss the boat. Maybe that means uh, that he gets to minus 110 over seven and a half and I'm no longer interested. That's okay. I would rather have a no bet uh, than a bad bet. And that's always been my personal mindset. So even if you don't have multiple books, which again, you should, and you should always shop for the best number, you can still use information from other markets to make better informed decisions, to get better numbers later on at the same book and try to read where the market may go. I think this market will come down on Snell and we'll get over seven and a half at a better number later on. Uh, but just kind of using that as like a tool for analyzing the market. The reason I like Snell, I should talk about that too, over seven and a half is he's had increased velocity and been throwing more changeups recently. That changeup for him is a very good pitch. Uh, it has a 48% whiff rate on it, according to Baseball Savant. So more changeups is a good thing. More velo is a good thing. In the past five starts with uh, more more velo and more changeups, here are Snell's strikeout marks. He's had seven, eight, 12, 12, and 11. Three of those were on the road. He's on the road for tonight. And we saw the Pirates get mowed down by Braxton Garrett. I think it was last Thursday where he went for like 13 strikeouts when his prop was five and a half. So I think that the over is the right play here. I just don't want to take it at a bad number. So I likely want to add Snell later on, but not going to do it right now just because I, the way I think the market will go. The Keller one, totally fine with. You can get like over five and a half for him is like minus 140 at some spots. So over five and a half minus 122. Okay, bet by me. So take the Keller one if you if you like it. Um, I, I think that there's value in the Keller one right now. Totally okay if you disagree. Um, but then if you like the Snell one, I'd hold off and potentially snag that one later on. So hopefully that's helpful as far as the overall thought process of using other markets to identify when to bet stuff and stuff like that. Because I think it's a very important skill when you are learning sports betting. That is all that we have for today here on Covering the Spread. We are back once again tomorrow. We're going to talk some NASCAR on the streets of Chicago. We're going to talk some Formula One in Austria as well. So it should be a pretty fun show. I'm psyched for both of those. Uh, absolutely. We'll talk about the markets for them on tomorrow's show. Do not forget to subscribe to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you like what you hear, leave us a thumbs up on YouTube or a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across the MLB for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk some racing. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 